Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's video is going to be a quick video on how I turn my $500 E30 from this into this. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the video uh, from the beginning when I received it until a couple of days ago uh, from me still prepping it. Let's do it. Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. This is Dustin. Today's another big day. Not exactly a technology day. Today's kind of a vlog type deal. Uh, part of my vlog, uh, I've been doing a lot of stuff with like activities that I do. My previous one is paintball. I still play paintball, just not as often uh, because I've work been working lately on these cars to get them ready for Oktoberfest. Um, cool thing that just happened, I got my uh, second BMW E30. It's a 1991 black E30 coupe. Uh, it's in need of lots of love and repair, uh, but I picked it up for super cheap. I got it for 500 bucks. Uh, my buddy Douglas, uh, he, who was actually going to buy the car before me in Tennessee. He uh, actually posted up on uh, Facebook about this car. Um, so he generously gave me the option to pick it up uh, in the event that he wasn't able to. So I was able to pick this car up. Took a couple of weeks to get it actually shipped out here. Uh, cost a pretty penny to get it shipped, but I think this is probably the safest way uh, to transport this car just because I don't know um, what is wrong with it, what's going to fail along the way, and what type of things are needed in order for it to be uh, safe to drive five hours so I figured I'd just go ahead and spend the extra money to be safe and get it towed here. Uh, my buddy Adam Gardner on the Facebook page for uh, the NCE30 page uh, hooked it up with a transport guy uh, so we were able to transport it from Tennessee all the way to here to uh, Charlotte, North Carolina and um, get it worked on. Uh, the crazy thing about this car is it's actually a two owner uh, car. Um, I don't know much history about it. It's got a lot of cool things that come with it, but it's also got a lot of problems that comes with any E30. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what exactly we'll uncover and how bad the repairs are going to be. So I'm kind of excited. I'm a little nervous to see what exactly is going to come up. I don't know how good the car runs. Uh, I don't know how much issues are going to be uh, prevalent whenever we start pulling up the carpets and cleaning out the motor and cleaning out the interior. So uh, let's go ahead and start cleaning up. Uh, everything that we can for now and then we'll pretty much tear it down from there uh, another note this car is black on black on the outside it's got a really really cool gray interior I've never seen an e30 with this gray colored interior um, so yeah let's go ahead and uh, clean it up we're gonna vacuum it first and then we're gonna pressure wash it and then we're going to wash it with some soap and wax and try to get as much dirt and grime off of this thing as is as we possibly can uh, keep in mind also that it's been sitting for four years I want to say uh, it was originally abandoned. I actually got the car with an abandoned title, so I don't know. Let's see. test. The 
trunk is locked. I can't unlock it. Uh, this is the bumper. Morning guys, it's uh, it's gonna be the second day that I'm gonna be working on the car. Uh, the first day, basically, I pulled the car off the trailer with the guy, cleaned it up and let it sit. Haven't had time to mess with it other than that. Did notice a few rust spots that are on the car, um, particularly under the passenger uh, kick panel. There's a rust spot, uh, and then right inside the wheel well fender, uh, close to the suspension but not on the suspension. Uh, top uh, there's actually a little bit of rust there so I'm gonna grind that when I get the suspension off and uh, take a look to see how bad it is uh, but then that's it uh, I'm just gonna grind that down and figure out where it's at with that so I don't really know how extensive it is but uh, yeah that's where I'm at right now with the E30 we're gonna get some H&R springs and some Bilstein shocks uh, my one of my favorite combos so we're gonna do that right now all right let's go all right, guys, just got back. So, got Bilstein shocks and H&R springs uh, for the E30, the black one there. That's going to be the next thing. Um, they're used, but they're good condition. It looks like the guy just put them on there. Uh, the guy that had it looks like he had a roll cage in the car and some wheels. It's a turbo um, M20 engine uh, that it came out of. So, I think it, it was definitely a good setup. H&R and Bilstein's are like my favorite set up so that's what we're gonna do I'm gonna pull this box inside I do it by a few other extra pieces that were broken when we pulled it out so that's totally fine it's gonna be like 15 bucks and then uh, once we do that we'll get these installed okay Bilstein shocks oh, HR springs this thing's broken but the uh, they look pretty new they look fairly, fairly new all right guys um, it is Sunday 238 car I got it finally uh, I got it to run, which is pretty cool. I picked it up, um, I want to say two weeks ago. Finally got it running today. I uh, put some battery into it. Uh, sprayed uh, like twice into the intake manifold with carburetor cleaner. Um, started right up. Before I did that though, uh, I did check the timing belt as well as the oil just to make sure everything was hunky-dory with that. And uh, yeah, I got it started up and now I have it uh, in the front yard. Uh, so we're basically um, going to take this time now uh, to wash and wax it. I've already washed it. It's super easy to do so I just couldn't, wouldn't take care of that. Uh, but now we're just going to wax it and kind of protect the paint that's currently here. Uh, it's not the prettiest paint but I do want to keep it from getting down uh, any worse than it already is. So I'm just going to wax it even if there's no clear. I'm going to some wax on it just to kind of get something in there to protect the paint so it doesn't keep drying cracking and uh, just getting worse so that's what we're gonna do now let's do it So guys, um, got these bad boys in today. Get on. <coughs> Get on, box them. Get on. Get on, box. Them. Why does it look so orange? How you like? Have you seen what's in this box yet? Are you ready? Well, I did see the sign that said fragile. Fragile? 
Do you speak Spanish? Huh? Do you speak Spanish? No. All right, well, let's let's open these up. You want to help me? Yes. All right, here we go. Oh, go. Go more backwards. You can come over here. Come over here. Uh, I, don't, I want to see your face. Right. I don't want to stand up too small. That's fine. Look at those over here. Oh, that's starting to hurt me. Wait, what's that? That is... How you like it? Good. You like those? Yeah. Look good, huh? Mm -hmm. I can't hold the camera one Daddy, minute. that was so cool. You like it? Yeah. It's good, uh, right? I'm one-handed. All right, so those are the wheels. Sorry, kids crying. Peace, peace out. Hey guys, uh, so there's been a little bit of progress on the E30. Um, so the past couple weeks, uh, I've actually gotten a lot done on this. Uh, as you can see in the front, I've got the ESM uh, 002Rs, uh, 16 by 8 in the front, ET20 uh, offset, and then I got the uh, 16 by 9s in the rear, which is ET15. Um, finally got those set up. I actually installed uh, suspension on this car. I put the Bielstein B8s, which is uh, better for lowering, and I put some HHR, I think one and a half inch lowering springs on here. So as it sits, it's currently uh, sitting pretty good. This is how it looks. So far, uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I did a brake bleed on the car today. Um, I've been trying to fix some cosmetic issues as far as clear coat and things like that. Uh, I actually resprayed this trunk. Uh, unfortunately though, when I was wet sanding it, I accidentally got a little fleck of sand in there and uh, I, I put some deep scratches in there. So I'm actually waiting to get a new buffer uh, before I fix those, uh, I actually fixed a bunch of the uh, clear coat uh, peels on this side also. Uh, I wet sanded that down. I did get like a little speck of sand in there also somehow. Um, so <laughs> that's something I'm learning. Uh, I haven't done it before. And uh, basically, uh, that's one of the things I would say if you fix clear coat and uh, you re wet sand things, definitely make sure your sanding block or whatever has no sand or anything on that on there. And uh, just constantly check it. Uh, unfortunately, though, when, after I got done fixing that clear coat spot, uh, this particular spot right here decided to show up. So now I'm gonna have to redo that entire little fender well area. Uh, hopefully, I can just you know mask off the fender piece and get that done. But uh, overall, it's coming together. Uh, if you saw this car before when I first got it, I'll put it in the clip below. It was pretty bad. Um, another thing with this car. Uh, so I think, uh, let me show you real quick, when this car was previously owned by somebody else, there was some front end damage, uh, and the reason why I can tell is there's obviously uh, the radiator mount isn't correct, uh, there's obviously like a big uh, dent over there, the paint that goes to the actual fender um, right here it's obviously been uh, adjusted and this hood is I mean look at that the, the paint doesn't match at all and just comes right off whoever painted this car hood uh, for repair the paint looks good but it didn't last very long um, obviously you know they didn't do a good job priming or prepping like even if you look right here um, that right there is basically like another <laughs> it's another car's paint color that they didn't even prime over they just sprayed it with uh, black paint I think this is probably two stage so it's got base coat and clear coat um, that's just peeling, peeling right off and the same goes for the hood they used a lot of Bondo on this hood so much that uh, this Bondo uh, like you know somebody probably sat on the hood at one point and just pressed it and cracked the Bondo up so that's going to have to be replaced eventually, uh, but that's probably not going to be after until after O-Fest. But uh, I've got a good amount of work done on this thing so far. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys some progress from when I first got it until now. Overall, I think the car looks good, and uh, I've got more stuff coming along the way. Uh, I'm just trying to get it mechanically running sound right now so that it's safe to drive with me and Rylan in the car uh, from when we go to O-Fest. So, pretty exciting. 
Uh, huge shout out to everybody that's been involved with me getting this car. <clears throat> uh, if you didn't know, I actually paid a whopping $500 for this car uh, from a, um, a wrecking company that pretty much towed this car uh, from an abandoned highway. It pretty much towed this car because it was abandoned on the hot side of the highway. Uh, when he received the car, from what I was told, the brakes uh, completely hit the floor. Um, they had issues with uh, battery or something or another. Um, I got the car. I paid 500 bucks for it. And my ultimate plan when I originally got this car was I didn't really care that it, if it ran. I didn't care uh, if you know anything else. It was like super cosmetic. As long as there wasn't that much rust, uh, which it does have rust, but not that much uh, compared to the red one. And I'll do that in another video to explain that car. But um, it didn't have as many problems. Uh, as I was expecting and actually got the car running uh, within the first week of having it just by putting a battery in it and starting it right off. There was no issues with that. I went ahead and put a timing belt in there. Uh, next, I did the radiator flush, I did the water pump, I did the timing belt. Um, I'm going to be doing all of the uh, joints hopefully soon. Um, that's not exactly in the money budget but that's coming down the road. I'm going to be doing all of the suspension links. Uh, actually I actually already swapped out the control arm bushings. Uh, for polyurethane, so that's pretty good. Uh, front end wise, um, like I said, there was some damage um, with front end damage. I'm not sure uh, if they actually swapped out the radiator mount in the front, the radiator support, or if they just bent it back into place. I got a feeling though that uh, I may eventually go ahead and you know re weld in a new one there to get a fresh one going. Once I do that, I think it'll look pretty good. Yeah, so uh, overall, the car came together pretty good. I'm really excited. Uh, there's still a lot of stuff uh, to be done to this car. Pretty much with any E30, there's like millions and thousands of things you can uh, improve uh, over time. Uh, some of the biggest things, and it's, it's not important right now because I want to get it mechanically sound, uh, is basically the interior. Uh, a lot of the interior pieces are kind of dry rotted and ripped, so I'll probably have to eventually replace those. Uh, but that's later down the road. The dashboard is horribly cracked. Uh, that's probably the first thing I'll get if I can find one for a good price. These things run about $300 to $200, uh, hopefully crackless. So if I can find one, that'll be good. And, you know, I'll just keep updating you guys as, as I get this thing going. I know it's not really entirely tech-related, but it's something that I really enjoy, and I hope you guys enjoy it also. Uh, I'll, definitely be, I'll definitely be doing more videos on this car on the channel because this is, you know, one of the best cars that I've ever owned. If you don't know the story, when I first came to Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, the first car that I ever purchased that was like mine that I actually, you know, worked for and I owned and had everything that I needed for was a 1991 318iS, which was the four-cylinder model of the BMW E30. And back then, nobody really had the E30s or modified them in a way that I had one, uh, so it was pretty cool to be the only person back then to have one. Uh, I eventually had got that car up to about 275,000 miles. Uh, one of the guys from Georgia who uh, pretty much ran the drifting circuit out there in Georgia purchased it. Um, I had to sell that car because we had to get a four-door sedan and we could, just couldn't tote around two kids in a, in a two-door coupe. So uh, I was sad to get rid of that and I, you know, I've been wanting one for a while and I finally was able to get one for a super good deal, uh, including the convertible. And I'll show you more on that one later. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I've been doing on this car so far. This was going to be the one that we're going to be bringing to Ofest and uh, I'm pretty excited. Uh, just to hang out and check out the other cars there. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to be getting a lot of footage for all the E30s at Ofest. I hope you guys have enjoyed this so far. Let me know, guys, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, I'll be getting more videos about this. I'll be getting more videos uh, of the E30s uh, very soon. Hopefully this will be something I can do more often because I've been lacking in videos lately, so I apologize. Uh, as always, guys, thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.